wait for the thumbs up from our friends at Talil. We're good to go. Okay, well, uh, welcome everyone to our Monday, December 19th, 2022 meeting, our regular council meeting, our last one for the year. We'll call the meeting to order now, and we'll begin by uh, rising, if you're able, for O Canada. Thank you, Shelley. All right. Um, so welcome, everyone. Um, we'll start, I guess, with a roll call of councillors. Excellent. District 1, Councillor Sean Sampson. Present. Thank you. District 2, Councillor Michael Davis. Present. Mm -hmm. D District 3, Councillor Melanie Sampson. Present. District 4, Warden Amanda Bombercat. Present. District 5, Deputy Warden Brent Sampson. Present. All right. Thank you, Troy. Um, so we do have a couple of items to add to the agenda from a planning advisory committee meeting that uh, just recently took place. So there are two items. Uh, we'll add them under committee reports. So item 8B regarding a development agreement for four tourist cabins, cottages on lot 18 PID 7514063 Orion Crescent in Walkerville, Richmond County. And the next item is uh, item 8C, will be amendments to rezone the portion, the properties identified as PID 7508686857513628, and 7508-6397 from the residential rural zone to the residential village zone to allow for a smaller lot. <coughs> Are there any other items to add to the agenda? I just had like to, um, yeah. and I know we touched on it a lot the other night, but uh, just a quick little summary of some information I got on the uh, boundary reviews or boundary discussion. Okay. And I just got it today. Sorry, I didn't. Okay. Okay. Sure thing. So we'll add that as um, I like for item twelve, shall we? That's okay. Sure. Boundary. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Councillor Victor. Any other items? Okay. Yeah, I'm sure. We're, I'm sure we're going to do this after uh, Madam Warren, but just some holiday wishes. Sure. That's actually. Let's just put that right on the agenda. So that will be another <laughs> another item twelve. So twelve B maybe. Uh, it's just some holiday wishes. Thank you. Since we're since we're all clearly in the Christmas spirit here this evening, <laughs> looking very festive. <laughs> all right. So are there any other items? Okay, so hearing that, could I ask for a motion to approve the agenda, please? <coughs> I'll make that motion. Thank you, Councillor Sean Sampson. Could I have a seconder, please? Second. I'll... Thank you, Councillor Melanie Sampson. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? All right, that motion is carried. So next item is the review of minutes, and we do have several meetings. It's been a busy month. Um, so the first is from November 28th, 2022, our regular council meeting. Uh, could I have a motion to approve those minutes, please? I'll make that motion to approve. Thank you, Councillor Digden. Could I have a seconder, please? I'll second that motion. Councillor Sean Sampson. Any further discussion on the minutes? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? 
All right, that message, that, that motion is carried. Um, the next meeting, it was from December 5th, 2022. It was a special meeting. Um, the minutes again have been circulated. Could I have a motion to approve if there are no errors? I'll make that motion. Thank you, Deputy Warden. Could I have a seconder, please? I'll second that. Thank you, Councillor Dickton. Is anybody having problems opening their system? Mm -mm. Uh, not right now, but... <laughs> <laughs> I like to put on my Christmas wish list. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on that list. <laughs> all right, so all those in favor, please say aye for the December 5th. Aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, that motion is carried as well. Um, the next set of minutes are from December 14th, 2022, special meeting which of course was just last week. Um, any, if there's no errors or omissions, could I have a motion to approve the minutes, please? I'll okay. move the approval of those minutes. Okay, so I heard uh, Councillor Melanie Sampson and I think Councillor Sean Sampson looked like he was yes, putting yep, his hand up for those as well. So seconded by Councillor Sean Sampson. Any further discussion on the December 14th minutes? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, that motion is carried. So these were <coughs> reversed in the actual. So the next item is the presentation from Laura. I think they it's somehow fine. didn't get on that. Yeah, yeah. Great, so presentation from Laura uh, Emery, the CEO of um, the Eastern County's Regional Library, and Claire Rankin, I'm not sure, Claire, if you're joining Laura, uh, regarding the St. Peter's Library relocation. And I know there was some time sensitivity around this, so we didn't accommodate to uh, incorporate you into our regular council agenda. I'm glad you could be here with us this evening. So over to you. Thank you so much. Good evening, Warden, Councilor, Municipal Staff, and the folks both here at home. Uh, we're very excited to bring this opportunity to council for um, your consideration, and it is the St. Peter's Hub opportunity. So for those who may not have it top of mind, here is the schedule of the current St. Peter's Library location. Um, it is open 28 hours a week, and it is staffed 30. Uh, this is pretty standard for Eastern Counties. It's the same schedule as our Petit de Gras location. Uh, we only offer, well, we don't only offer, but we offer service in English at the St. Peter's Library, and we offer bilingual service at the uh, Petit de Gras Library. So you can get a sense of some of the services available. Um, and one challenge of the location, which is part of why we're here tonight, is that the library is set quite far back from the road. There is a sign, but it's very easy to drive by if you don't know exactly where it is. And that's not great for a library because you want visitors and folks to the community to discover it um, and come in because, of course, any public library in Nova Scotia can serve anyone. Everybody is welcome. So that's... Although it is next door to this the farmer's pantry. <laughs> which highly recommends it. As a person who enjoys espresso, little shout out. I love you guys. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, that's probably helping increase our circulation, I am sure. Um, and speaking of increasing circulation, uh, obviously the pandemic was very challenging for many community services. Um, however, you can see from the upward, upward slant that uh, our circulation is starting to recover, our use is starting to recover. We did get new users um, and we have 422 active registered users. So there are folks who have library cards, but if they haven't been in in the last three years or so, we don't necessarily count them as active. Mm -hmm. They still may be in the system and they're certainly welcome uh, to come back and we encourage everyone to use the library. And it's great, we had 48 new users. Um, I'm sure we got some folks who uh, signed up for the library after the pandemic and the distribution of rapid test kits mm -hmm. at libraries, which of course is a really valuable service in this area as we're in a bit of a testing desert, uh, is how public health described it to me one time. Um, and so that's been a role that's certainly working in libraries, I never expected, but it does show the value um, of having a public library in a community. There are surprise things that we can end up doing and government has certainly understood that libraries have a, a valuable part to play in helping us all recover uh, from the pandemic. So um, what else can I tell you about that little 
graph there before we move on. The extremely low blue section, that was when we are, were at curbside only. So we were still getting people books and materials, but the province didn't count that as open hours because people couldn't go into the facility. And that was a safety aspect. Um, as we have only one staff member there, it was important to protect their health and make sure we could keep providing service during that particularly challenging time. Um, so the St. Peter's Library is very interesting. I'm sure folks maybe recognize this uh, adorable face. Um, <laughs> that is Farley Mowat, who we were very fortunate to have speak at the 2012 opening of the St. Peter's Library. And that is a very great way to kick off a library. Um, he was delighted and surprised and just in wonderment that anyone would create a library in this day and age, and he was quite right. It was actually very visionary of council to put this service into play. Um, it was certainly the result of a lot of work. Eastern counties needed to find the staffing money, which we did out of uh, the mandated contribution by realigning services and and ensuring that you know the county uh, benefited from its tax dollars. But the county made it a, a significant investment in the facility and the rent and just putting the shelves in and all of that, right? Mm -hmm. So this is, um, you know, what we're talking about tonight is really seeing what we can do to make a change to enhance the service. Um, the St. Peter's Library is lovely, but it is very small uh, at approximately 675 square feet that are usable, okay? So the shelves and are not counted in that. Um, and so, you know, we really want to look at how we can go forward and certainly honor uh, the legacy that Farley Mowat helped to start. And one of the things people might not realize is Farley's father was the chief librarian for the province of Saskatchewan back in the day. Farley lived out there. That's where he first got his start in wildlife because he was in, living in the middle of nowhere, actually. And <laughs> <laughs> nobody from Saskatchewan's listening. <laughs> <laughs> but his father was a librarian and Farley learned his love of books from him. Yes, and he had a very entertaining speech about that. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so... Uh, one thing that it's really important for council to understand is this is not my idea, <laughs> okay? okay? I got enough work, all right? <laughs> this is the community's idea, and we are in service to the community, as we are, that's something we all share, the library and the council. Um, and so, you know, it's funny how these things come about. There were discussions in 2019 and 2020, um, a series of three community conversations held in St. Peter's to discuss the main street of the village. And there were a lot of ideas expressed at those meetings, uh, which involved obtaining the, the use of the former um, NSLC vacant building that's at 9992 Grenville Street. Um, so, like, there are a lot of different ideas that came up, and, of course, one of them is that the library should go in there. Now, I wasn't at those discussions, but this is how these things happen. People spontaneously think that would be a great place. It's right on Main Street. It's a storefront opportunity. It will help promote the service and, and be kind of a showcase for the community. So, that... That happened, and um, a couple years later, here we are at Council talking about it. Um, and, you know, the library was one idea, and the other idea that's important to this concept was the Visitor Information Center. Now, I certainly don't speak on behalf of the VIC in any way, but uh, there is a strong example of a VIC housed in a public library in Anaganish. Mm -hmm. Um, and so this is not new territory, um, and it seems like an excellent opportunity because we do provide information at the library and information about where to eat, where to stay, where to go and see, and what businesses are in the area is incredibly important information, and our staff are often acting as a default VIC during the winter months anyway. So if we have the brochures in the library and it's... February, it's all going to make sense to folks. So it's uh, certainly part of the concept that we wanted to bring to you tonight. And so that was part of those community discussions. I think you were there, Claire, were you not? Yeah, the other ideas that were raised were um, a recording studio, um, a community kitchen, although there's one now starting in River Roots. So. And then, of course, the gym closed, and that became the de facto place to put the new uh, mm -hmm. fitness center in the back of the uh, the new, the old liquor store. Plus the fact, A, it was a brick building, it seemed fairly sound when the liquor store moved away from it, and the village got it for a very reasonable price. So, 
uh, everything was coming up roses, as it were, when we were looking for a place to, to how to fill the building and the best use for it right in the middle of town. Yeah, and that's a really important thing. Libraries work very well when there is foot traffic inherently in the building, right? You will go people who will suddenly sign up for the library because they're going to the gym, and mm -hmm. it's right there, and why not? And vice versa, <coughs> that people do get that inherent foot traffic, and they start to see what's available in the community. So there's a good logic to um, having the multiple... Uh, capacities within the space. Um, you can see the location here, and again, really central, uh, very important in terms of ease of use for the public and the community. Um, and, you know, there's aspects of this location that I want to talk to you tonight or about how it could benefit and enhance library service, because so much of library service is constrained currently by the space and the location. Um, did you have anything to add? Well, to? just that the, the, another enhancement to this location is the fact that the village just signed a lease with Irving Oil to take over the parking lot across the street. And oh. so that uh, includes a lot of space which we need in St. Peter's for parking. There's going to be some enhancements done at the parking spot, but the fact that it's now a, a signed lease means that um, there'll be extra space for patrons of the library and the gym and the mm -hmm. other people through town. Well, fantastic. Okay, so you can see the proposed layout of the facility. Um, the Laura, library and the it might help if you popped it on like um, the presentation view. Oh, sorry, just, I didn't it's, realize. It's a little small. I, uh, my <laughs> it's okay. apologies, no, no, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Just from the um, current slide. There you go. Yeah. Uh, the second one. Over there. there you go. Great. My apologies, uh, everyone. Uh, <laughs> the monitors are okay. just. That's all right. right. There <laughs> we <laughs> go. There we go. That's better. It is better. Yes, yes sure much. Is. <laughs> okay, so one change from this drawing, or one thing that I want to draw everyone's attention to, is that the um, plans will be developed with a door between the library visitor information space and the community room, because the proposal is to have that community room as part of the library space when the library is open, so that activities and programs can be scheduled in the library, and if it's not in use for that, people can go in and find a, a quiet area to read in or study. So that is part of the concept. Um, we have confirmed with Israel's insurance company that there is no problem having the visitor information center open while the library is not open. So people can potentially come in and still enjoy the library while they're stopping by to the VIC. Um, whether or not they'll be able to check out de books depends on whether or not I can get funding from the province uh, for a self-checkout. Mm. And if that was in place, oh. that actually would probably make it quite easy where uh, VIC staff can say, just check it out yourself over there, That's no problem. Right. So Well, e Eastern Counties Regional Library has the one only self-checkout library in, in Nova Scotia oh, right the now. the open library. We shouldn't even throw that possibility okay, okay. out there. <laughs> um, we, we do have the only open library in Atlantic, well, there's only five in Canada, but it's essentially a library that you can open with your library card and go in and use and check out books yourself with a self-checkout. So certainly, um, I think there's capacity to expand service, at least in a, a small way, by having the VIC staffed and, and having that opportunity. At the very least, <coughs> Everybody can enjoy the space, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so yes, that community room. Uh, you've got a storage room and um, proper accessibility. One of, one of the features that the village is insisting upon is the fact that there'll be a public washroom that'll be open to anybody coming inside. It's going to be open for the public to use at any time. And I can assure you, people stop at libraries to use the library <laughs> quite frequently when they're traveling, so it'll all make sense well, to everyone. Well, it's a separate entrance, but still. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it'll all make sense yeah. to everyone. Um, okay, so is there anything else to tell you about this? Well, there is an actually really important part to tell you. You see how the library visitor information section is empty. Okay, that's very important because we didn't wish to create a design or put in any kind of proposed furniture without doing the work with municipal staff and stakeholders and the community and seeing what kind of um, approach everyone wants to take <coughs> to designing and integrating the VIC in the library if council's in support of this. So we didn't want to put the cart before the horse. Um, there are expenses certainly attached with moving um, and attached with setting up furnishings and shelving and so on. And these expenses are not something that Eastern counties can 
bear. We can try and fundraise. Uh, there's a few sources I'm already in early preliminary talks about. We can certainly search for grants, but we need to have a mandate or a direction or a support from council to be able to take that to funders and say, this is happening and we'd like to seek support for the following things within the space. Um, so there's a lot of work that has to be done if this concept is something that council wants to support uh, to make sure that when we do come back for a final approval, all the work's been done and we've done the most that we can do to mitigate any costs associated with this. So um, there's lots of discussions that have happened, but there are more that need to happen about how the VIC and the library will combine effectively and the work, like the flow of the foot traffic, um, will enhance uh, both services is the goal, obviously. So that's something I wanted to draw your attention to about the space. Okay, one thing Eastern Counties has that we can bring to the project is uh, we received a $10,000 grant for a Wi-Fi extension. And I should probably get my notes here. Um, the Department of Community Services funded uh, ECRL and other libraries for the installation of a wide beam outdoor Wi-Fi access point. Okay, so this equipment needs to be mounted as high as possible, and it takes the Wi-Fi internet connection that the province pays for, for libraries, and it expands it, it broadcasts it. Now, we've put in a, a fairly conservative estimate of the actual um, uh, range that the Wi-Fi is likely to have. Claire diligently read the specs, and we can expect it to be a little bit larger yeah. if it works well. They use the, the the example of a city block. Mm -hmm. So it could, it's ranges from about 300 to 400 <laughs> feet range in all directions. Yeah, and so we've purchased the gear and we were in process of kind of testing that, but the installation cost, we have 8,000 to put towards that and that could be included in the tender. Um, and so, you know, that is hopefully a positive vision, creating a Wi-Fi, free Wi-Fi in the downtown core in St. Peter's. That is sustainable because it's based on the library uh, internet connection, which is paid for by the province, right? So to me, this seems like an excellent location and a good service enhancement for everyone in terms of helping to connect people. As we someone who works in her car a lot, I can... <laughs> <laughs> Those locations are wonderful. Yes, and we <laughs> But do I do need to note we are kind of oh, close great. to time. Oh, great. Okay. Now, so. Um, the building has a great opportunity to increase accessibility. This image is from the Rick Hansen website, and I know that the Rick Hansen certification um, is something that uh, both the village and the, the county are, are working towards. Mm -hmm. um, and if we move to a larger space, uh, going from 675 to about 1,200, 1,300 feet, we have the opportunity to expand what is on offer for the community. So increase the collection size by 25%. And of course, we have a room, and we can work with the partners in the community and expand the opportunity for community to connect and have programming. Um, and that's something that we really have been constrained by the current location. So I would see that as a great enhancement to get people together and to learn together and enjoy together. Like lang language classes? Mm -hmm. being, becoming very much of a, a yes. concern around our place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so certainly opportunities to do that if we have the space. All year round access for the VIC, that has to be a good thing in terms of promotion of local businesses and, and facilities and services. And any questions? We're, we're hoping that this is an attractive concept and we could, I think it's called a support in principle, yep. to do the work necessary to bring back more detail and, and specific costs and specific plans to council. But we didn't want to go ahead without introducing it. So that's what you're looking for at this stage of the game is kind of a notional support mm -hmm. to, so that you can do the homework you need to come up with the costs and the design. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I mean, I think the new, I think the new location is perfectly suited to the, to, to the building, to the community right there on the main street. I think all the points you've made have been, you know, well received by me for sure. I definitely would support the move, uh, you know, can't, can't guarantee on the money parts, but we can certainly <coughs> entertain that once we have an idea of what that looks like. <coughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Great. So I guess, go around. Oh, yeah. go ahead, no, so I, I got two, two quick questions, I guess. One, I guess the first one would be, uh, how many users are currently using the 
library? Well, it's hard to say because people can just pop in and grab a rapid test kit. Does that count? But we do have 422 members, registered active members. So these are people using the library every month, basically. We have a three-week long period. Okay. Okay. That, that's a quick answer. So the yeah. second one, I hope it's just as quick. Um, <laughs> no. What are you going to do for parking? Parking. Well, well, there's parking in front of the building. I mean, I doubt if you were ever there when it was uh, operating... Uh, NSLC, but uh, there is that. I, I did have to pick up some on the yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> and there's also the, across the street, but because the village just leased the, uh, the old Irving parking lot, and then uh, adjacent to the building is also the Foodland parking lot for after hours. And everything, so. Yeah, there should be lots of parking. Well, some people need parking. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't we say We don't lots, think this would yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm just looking at it on viewpoint, and in behind, is that an option? In behind no. a building? No. no. No, there's very little space there. Okay, is that good? So the parking lot we're talking about is uh, the parking lot where you guys put your tree up every year, right? Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a large lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, it's, it's where the, the flea markets and all that. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That lot's going to be enhanced with other things, yeah. but it's going to be yeah. primarily a parking lot. And how long is that lease for? Well, until Irving decides. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. a long term. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Um, uh, Deputy Warden, did you have any comments or questions? Yeah, no, just I guess, um, yeah, you, um, <coughs> you feel comfortable that this will be an improvement space wise, even though I know obviously the square footage is increasing quite a bit, but given that you're combining it with the VIC, that it'll, it'll still be a, a net positive? I do believe that, yes, 100%. And the VIC and the library will complement each other very well. So, you know, and VIC is not open all year round, so that space then inherently becomes part of the library space. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the design, you could set up a desk that might break down during mm -hmm. the off season, mm -hmm. and then you've got, you know, even more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it, it just really depends on that, you know, vision yeah. of all the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Uh, thinking what is best for it really enhancing the community service aspect of it. And the converse is tr true in the summer when the VIC is open seven days a week and the library isn't, right. then the VIC will be still there to mm -hmm. function in that space. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. if you could get the self-checkout, then you'd be golden because really then the library would be open extended hours, which would be really lovely. Yeah. Yeah. At least for, yeah, picking up books, right, yes. which would be great for people and so yeah. convenient. And, yeah. of course, anyone who visits St. Peter's can use their card through our sharing system, mm -hmm. uh, the same page right. catalog. So, uh, you know, everyone could benefit from it. So mm -hmm. it's an attractive selling point, I think, for the community. Mm -hmm. Um, you mentioned uh, the Andy Ganesh example of the two coexisting. Is that the People's Place library? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Let's stop in there. Lovely life. I've been there many times. <laughs> it's a beautiful yeah. community. Yeah, it good. really is. I've worked yeah. out of there many times. Yeah. 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 I've yes. been to meetings sure, there and I've worked out of there. Yeah. It's a really great concept. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and we want to mirror as many aspects of that as we can for, you know, a smaller but still powerful kind of right. facility. Right. Great. Okay. So if there's no other questions, I guess at this point I would ask Council if anyone is prepared to make a motion to provide notional support to the concept to uh, support the, I think you call it a community hub. I will make that motion. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Melanie Sampson. Could I have a seconder, please? I'll second that. Thank you, Deputy Warden. Any further discussion on that item? Okay. So if that's being said, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. That motion is carried. So thank you very much for your time this evening. It's much appreciated. We look forward to seeing the, the rest of the homework. <laughs> Merry Christmas. To all. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Okay. Um, so now we will open it up for question period, which is restricted to items on the Committee of the Whole report and the Bylaw and Policy Committee reports, except I don't think we have one of those, do we? No, and we have PAC. So um, it's a question period restricted to our committee reports. And we'll just give that a minute. Oh, and yes, for those watching on uh, online, the number to call in is 902-226-9885. Okay, so I'm not hearing any phones ringing or seeing any folks come for questions, so we'll move on to the next item on the agenda, 
which is our committee report. So over to you, Deputy Warden. Um, there's a lot going on for Committee of the Whole. <laughs> committee of the Whole report, December 2022. The committee met on December 12th, 2022. The committee discussed the Johnstown Community Development Cooperative request for a letter of support for the Irish Cove Reclaimed Limestone Quarry Walking Trails Project. I move that Council accept the recommendation of the Committee of the Whole to have Warden Mummerkett draft a letter of support to the Department of Natural Resources for the Irish Cove Reclaimed Limestone Quarry Walking Trails Project. Okay, thank you Deputy Warden. Motion's on the table. Could I have a seconder? Councillor Sean Sampson has seconded the motion. Is there any further discussion on that? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? And the motion's carried. The committee discussed the draft strategic communication plan. I move that Council accept the recommendation of the Committee of the Whole to have staff reach out to the Cape Breton Partnership for support in revising the June 4th, 2021 draft strategic communication plan. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Warden. Could I have a seconder on that motion, please? I'll second. Thank you, Councillor Melanie Sampson. Could, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, that motion is carried. The committee discussed the delivery of the Chronicle Herald and Cape Breton Post in rural communities. I move that Council accept the recommendation of the Committee of the Whole to have Warden Mummerkett draft a letter of concern to Saltwire requesting the resumption of rural door-to-door -door delivery or consider semi-central drop-off locations and encourage other municipalities to do the same. All right, could I have a seconder on that motion, please? I'll second that. Thank you, Councillor Digden. Any further discussion on that motion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, that motion is carried. The committee discussed property minimum bids for February 10th, 2023 tax sale. I move that Council accept the recommendation of the Committee of the Whole that Council authorize the Revenue Manager and CFO to sell property number 01415298 for a minimum acceptable bid of $5,000 and if this property does not sell for that minimum acceptable bid to proceed and sell the property for any bid. Could I have a seconder on that motion please? I'll second. Thank you, Councilor <coughs> Melanie Sampson. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. And the motion is carried. Thank you, everyone. <coughs> I move that Council accept the recommendation of the Committee of the Whole that Council authorize the Revenue Manager and CFO to sell property numbers 0246518, 0345518, 027-4151-045-375-21-0517-6328-079-44063 for a minimum acceptable bid of the principal only and if these properties do not sell for the minimum acceptable bid to sell these properties for half the principal only and if these properties do not sell for half the principal only amount to proceed and sell these properties for any bid. Okay, thank you, Deputy Warden. There's a motion on the floor. <coughs> Could I have a seconder, please? Second. Thank you, Councilor Melanie Sampson. Any further discussion on that item? Yeah, so, I, Madam Warden, I'd just like to note the, uh, the reason for my okay. objection to this is that the, uh, it's costing the county and the taxpayers, on, you know, I guess thousands and thousands of dollars to some of these are demolitions and um, we're selling them for near to zero um, dollars. You know, therefore at the end, I guess, you know, my take on it is uh, they don't make land every day, more or less, so it's not costing the county anything to hold on to it. Right. Therefore. That's a fair point, for sure. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Digden. Okay, any Councillor? So to that point, what I would say is that as long as these um, accounts are sitting on our receivables listing and not being sold and being used, we're also not collecting taxes on those, so we're further um, losing money for the taxpayers of the county, and that's why I would support the disposal of these. We're not in the business of holding land, and we're in the business of collecting taxes, so we need new people to own the property so we can mm -hmm. collect some taxes on them. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Sampson. And, and I do agree. That is, a, yeah. that is a great point. You know, however, I guess um, we do let lands go 
above and beyond maybe what they should go for before we look at collecting the taxes. So I think before we, uh, unless we start tightening up the strings, um, you know, we're letting, you know, one of these properties started off at well over 100000 and now we're down to $5,000 or a minimum bid. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we'll never recoup the $95,000 of loss if we want to put it that way in the books. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Dayton. Okay. Uh, any further discussion on that item? All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Okay. The motion is carried. The committee discussed the Village of St. Peter's guarantee request. I move that Council accept the recommendation of the Committee of the Whole that Council approve the draft loan guarantee requested by the Village of St. Peter's in the amount of $56,407.50 for the purposes of purchasing a new sidewalk tractor. Okay, okay. I'll second that motion. Thank you, Councillor Digton. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, that motion is carried. The committee discussed inactive accounts identified by the Property Valuation Services Corporation. I move that Council accept the recommendation of the Committee of the Whole that Council authorize the Manager of Accounting and Finance and CFO to proceed and write off the principal and interest associated with the inactive accounts in the total amount of $28,209.44. Okay, could I have a seconder on that motion, please? Second. Thank you, Councillor Sampson. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, that motion is carried. The committee discussed the Richmond River Roots Market Garden Society's request for a letter of support for the Sustainable Communities Challenge Fund proposal. I move that Council accept the recommendation of the Committee of the Whole that Warden Mummerkett draft a letter of support for the Richmond River Roots Market Garden <coughs> Society for their Sustainable Communities Challenge Fund proposal to obtain a second climate battery greenhouse. Okay, there's a motion on the table. Could I have a seconder, please? Yeah, I'll second that motion. Thank you, Councillor Sean Sampson. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? that motion is carried. This concludes the Committee of the Whole report for the month of December 2022, and I move its adoption. Thank you, Deputy Warden. Uh, could I have a seconder on the motion to approve the committee report? I that motion. Thank you, Councillor Sean Sampson. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, that motion is carried. So the next item on the agenda were the two additions from the Planning Advisory <coughs> Committee. The first was regarding the development agreement uh, on Orion Crescent in Walkerville, Richmond County. And at this point, uh, based on the recommendation from Planning Advisory, we would be looking for a motion uh, to move the first reading in regards to entering into a development agreement for four tourist cabins and cottages on Lot 18, PID 75144063, Orion Crescent, Walkerville, Richmond County and that Municipal Council schedule the public hearing for January 23rd, 2023. Would anyone like to I'd make like that? I'd like to make that motion. Thank you, Councillor Melanie Samps. Uh, could I have a seconder, please? Yep, I'll second that motion. Thank you, Councillor Sean Samson. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, that motion is carried. Okay, the next item is uh, the amendment to rezone portions of the properties um, identified uh, in a residential rural zone to a residential village. The motion we'd be looking for at this stage, which was a recommendation from PAC, is to move the first reading to approve the proposed land use bylaw amendment to rezone the portions of the properties identified as PID 750868668. That's just challenging. It isn't it? <laughs> yes. 7513-6218, 75052530, and 75219568, and 75086397 from the residential, R residential rural R2 zone to the residential village R1 zone to allow for smaller lot subdivision, and that Municipal Council schedule a public hearing for January 23rd, 2023. Would someone make that motion, please? Yeah, I'll make that motion. Thank you, Councillor Sean Sanson. 
Um, could I have a seconder? I'll second that. Thank you, Deputy Warden. Nobody wants to repeat it? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 <laughs> those opposed? All right. <laughs> Motion is carried. <laughs> Okay, so now we have... Madam Warden, on that one, can yes. we have a question? Yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. you kind of, I... Did I go too fast? I'm sorry. Well, you, a just, lot skip, of numbers. you skip through you the question. Ahead. I just wanted, <laughs> does that affect any of the businesses down there, or is that all residential now? I believe it's all residential. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay, um, so new business is next on the agenda. Property Valuation Services Corporation regarding the virtual 101 assessment sessions. And um, maybe I'll sure. hand them to you, Troy, for yep. comment. Um, I think we were talking to the <coughs> NSFM, mm -hmm. and then they uh, said that they are sent some emails around uh, saying that if councils were interested, that they come in and do a just a refresher course with everybody, just to let let you guys know what they're up to, and if you have any questions, uh, you're midway through your term, and they're just looking for a half hour touch point with you guys. Uh, so. Uh, if uh, any date in January that works with your schedule except the 25th, they are available to do a virtual half hour session with us. I would suggest that we probably go to an hour just in case we have mm -hmm. any questions. Okay. Um, but uh, they would like a one hour session with you guys if. Uh, so, kind of a workshop to take us. Exactly. To. Great. So, we could tie it in with another meeting where you're all together. Uh, we could mm -hmm. possibly. Uh, uh, do it at a supper time before one of our council or committee meetings, whatever you guys are up to yeah, that they makes it convenient. Lunch and learn. <coughs> yeah. yeah, okay. Um, would folks be more interested in doing that right ahead of a meeting or? Yeah. Yeah, like a six o'clock. I know that makes it tough for some people to get here. But. Okay, so why don't we try to schedule for six o'clock uh, before one of our January meetings? I know sure. one that we don't have already scheduled in there. Um, that sound good? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much for the follow-up on that, Troy. No, it's, uh, not a problem. Good, good information for us to have, for sure. Um, so the next item is correspondence action required, and there were none. So the next was uh, correspondence for information purposes, and we did receive a copy of the 2022 NSCC report to the community. And really, um, the report is a, a bit of a snapshot of uh, stories that demonstrate the tangible impacts of NSCC on the province of Nova Scotia. Um, there's some really great content in there. I encourage everyone to read it, and um, uh, certainly maybe we could, could we pop that onto our social media or something like <laughs> For that? For sure we could. Yeah, yeah, and maybe I'll do the same, so. Great. Um, any questions on the correspondence? All right. <coughs> uh, so moving right along then, review of the action items. So any questions on the action items list? Um, that was part of the package. Okay, um, so hearing none, we'll move on to items added to the agenda. And Councillor Dignan, I believe the first one was from you regarding the boundary review. <coughs> yeah, so just the, um, I know we spent hours on this the other night, and I don't want to uh, dig up uh, dig up or start it all over. However, I did make, uh, I did make some contact today with the uh, UARB board. Um, explained who I was, and um, I, I was informed that um, the ultimate decision is is a council decision, not a UARB board decision. Um, so they don't they'll they'll take I guess a recommendation, or they won't. They'll send it back to us if they feel that it's not suitable. However, the lawyers don't send back the zones or the break up the districts. That's up to council to do. So I just um, in saying that I went over the scenario with the uh, person on the phone today that we that we have currently and. Um, they felt with minor adjustments here or there that um, that we could send it in without making any major changes. And uh, mm -hmm. in the past, I was just told that um, that most of the uh, most of the counties actually don't meet the plus or minus ten. There's several of the districts that stay out. Mm -hmm. um, Stantec should have our uh, numbers um, because they were the one who did the last one. Yeah. So I know we asked them. Last week, um, they they're going to forward them to me the um, the link and the numbers and the email just to show what what was in 2014 2016. Right. Um, anyway, we can I'll bring that back or and share. Certainly, with anything that you get from them. I will, and I'll, I'll loop everybody in yeah. the email, and you can mm -hmm. the link that that the lady's going to send me. We can I'll look at it and 
kind of go from there. I just thought before we make any major yeah. changes or disruptions that uh, yeah. Yeah. I would bring that to everybody's attention. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Digden. Much appreciated. Any questions or comments on that? Okay. Um, so uh, the next item then is holiday wishes. And I think we should start with District 1 in the Christmassy sweater <laughs> with the antlers. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> cool. Thank you, Madam Morton. So, no, I mean, uh, I just want to wish uh, all my residents in District 1 and all the residents of Richmond County. Uh, very Merry Christmas and all the best in 2023. Also want to wish uh, all the staff here uh, the same. Happy holidays to them, to everybody and their family. I mean, for us sitting around this table, everybody gets to see us twice a month on camera. <laughs> uh, they get to see our faces every second Monday, but they don't see the faces that uh, keep this place going, right? Mm -hmm. So. Uh, uh, we're all uh, little cogs in a big wheel, and there's a lot of people here that keep this big wheel running, right? So just want to wish uh, all of you and all the staff uh, in this building uh, happy holidays as well, right? So, well said. Joyeux Noël à vous toutes. Je vous souhaite une bonne année, puis joyeux Noël. Amusez-vous bien, puis soyez sauf. Merci. Thank you. Well said, Councillor. Does anybody want to follow that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to follow it. The only thing I would add, <laughs> the only thing I would add is, uh, you know, I guess remember when everybody's sitting down, opening their gifts and having their dinners, that there's many people out there that don't yeah. get that opportunity. So, um, you know, if there's one thing you can do is reach out to your next door neighbor or somebody down the road, and you know, there's always somebody in need out there, and my, definitely much or, you know, less fortunate than those of us sitting around the table tonight, so. Mm -hmm, for sure. It is the season to, uh, I guess, give and help out, so do what you can. For sure. Okay. Uh, Councillor Sampson or Deputy Warden, would you like to? So, <coughs> considering, <laughs> considering I, I, uh, the, the, the creativity has long gone out of me this year, I apologize now that Sorry, I, I didn't have a, We're so disappointed. oh, I'm ready, and the flack I received, I guess I'll say it on camera now, I'll have one ready next year. <laughs> really? <laughs> I, I was yeah. expecting it when I seen the oh, bow tie. Yeah. When I seen the bow tie, I'm like, here we go. Um, <laughs> however, a lot of great points made there, and uh, Merry Christmas to everybody, and uh, I'll, I'll pass it along, and just uh, to all those out there, enjoy responsibly, and take time with family and friends. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, I'd like to wish a, a Happy New Year and a Merry Christmas to the residents of District 3 and, of course, those from Richmond County as well. Uh, and I guess what I, I would sort of add on to, to all the other councillors, I'm always amazed at such a busy time of the year. Everybody is so busy with everything. Mm -hmm. uh, it just seems like everybody's trying to wrap everything up before the end of the year, and yet we have hundreds of volunteers throughout our communities who then take on even more on their plates to ensure that the residents in their communities have a fun time and enjoy the holiday. And I'm always amazed by that because it seems like there's never enough hours in the day and yet somehow these people find the hours in their days. And so I think a very special thanks to them for always volunteering throughout the year, but especially for volunteering at this time of the year when I think everybody's schedules are pretty tight. Um, and it does mean a lot to a lot of people, as, as you mentioned, Councillor Digden, who, um, that's their Christmas, yeah. right? That's what they really enjoy. So again, thank you to all of you for doing that and um, enjoy your enjoy your time uh, and unplug for a little bit, especially you, Warden. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to yes. an unplugging moment for sure. But uh, yeah, no, very well said. And thank you for adding that to the agenda, Councillor. I uh, certainly didn't want to wrap up without, without saying that as well. Um, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Feliz Navidad. I've got Boney M singing in my mind right now. Um, happy Festivus. Yeah, mm. <laughs> that's right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I hope everyone has a wonderful holiday season and uh, and does take some time to unplug. And and I would particularly encourage people, you know, as you mentioned, Councillor Digden, not everyone has the opportunity to celebrate with family and friends. So, you know, and, 
And I think, you know, if you know some newcomers in your community, maybe mm-hmm. invite them into your homes and, mm-hmm. and, uh, and get to know your neighbors. It's a, it's a great thing. And uh, certainly, uh, if you are a newcomer in the community, don't, don't hesitate to reach out to one of us or a local, your local welcome group, because we have several mm-hmm. in the county now. Um, and, uh, and make sure you get you know, plugged in as much as this is a time for unplugging, it's also a time for connection. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, so have a great holiday. And thank you very much, everyone. And uh, we've had some chocolates ahead of us on the on the table here. Yeah. <laughs> Special thanks to the staff as well, of course. Um, it's been a year of great change, but I think a year of great progress as well. And, um, and I know everyone has worked really hard to get us here. So Somebody said Chris made the cookies and Jason the fudge, so I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm eager to try it. <laughs> All right. So we'll leave it at that. And the next item is our question period. It is restricted to the remainder of the agenda following COW and Bylaw Policy Committee. Um, for folks uh, watching online today, <coughs> it's, the number to call is 902-226-9885. Um, that's 902-226-9885, or if there are members from the gallery who would like to ask questions, you're welcome to do so. And for members of the media, I'll be available after the meeting for questions, as I'm sure as the other councillors will as well, because we do not have any in-camera items uh, for this evening to discuss. So. I think everyone's making their Christmas cookies tonight, right? Yeah. So they're making their Christmas cookies and watching their Christmas movies. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that we're done at 7.53 is <laughs> also a Christmas right present. There. <laughs> <laughs> also a Christmas present. Yes. Okay. So I'm not hearing the phone ring. Thank you very much, Shelley, for being on guard for that. Um, there being no further items on the agenda, we'll consider the meeting adjourned. Thank you. Have a very Merry Christmas, everyone.